Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. I recently found out that all late night shows are fake, and maybe, most of you already know this. Everything from the conversation, to the crowd's applause, to the way people are dressed, none of it is authentic. And when I look back at it, now it makes perfect sense. The guest that comes on, no matter who they are, is always so charismatic with their answers, and has great stories to tell. That's because they rehearse everything. The show's producers will rehearse with the guests before the show starts, to make sure they got their lines right. And somehow, every joke that gets told, gets an amazing response from the audiences. That's because the audience is told how to react by a guy holding a sign. They got to try and make it as entertaining as possible. All the lines and jokes are written by actual writers. All to make the people on screen look good. That explains why Jimmy Fallon is always fake laughing, because even he doesn't find what he does to be as amusing as he wants you to think it is. The majority of people who appear on the shows are actors anyway, so they have no trouble acting like everything is real. Is this show a representation of all that we consume on TV? None of them are authentic. What do you think? Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. Can you believe that we've been driving around in gas-guzzling cars for over a century when we could have had electric vehicles all along? It's almost hard to fathom. But why don't we know more about this groundbreaking invention? Why wasn't this history taught to us in school? It's possible that the story of the first electric car was deliberately buried or overlooked by the mainstream car industry, who were more interested in promoting gas-powered vehicles. Let's dive into this fascinating piece of history a bit more. The electric car was actually created in the 1830s. In 1828, Anos Jedlik invented the electric motor. A few years later, Robert Anderson invented the first electric car, between 1832 and 1839, the exact year is unknown. While it was far from perfect, it was a monumental achievement, and Anderson deserves recognition for being the first person to make an electric car a reality. Unfortunately, Anderson's electric car never gained widespread popularity, and the gas-powered car soon became the dominant mode of transportation. The success of the ubiquitous and cheap fuel campaign made it an attractive alternative to electric cars at the time. But that's not the whole story. In the late 19th and early 20th century, electric cars actually enjoyed a brief moment of popularity. In fact, they were considered to be everyday vehicles, there is ample photographic evidence from that era, where charging stations were widespread. Electric cars at the time were very popular with women, who found them more reliable and easier to operate than gas-powered cars. But as the parasite's mind developed, gas-powered cars became more widely promoted, and you already know exactly what happened next. It's amazing to think that the technology for electric cars has been around for almost 200 years, but it took us this long to figure it out. It's a fascinating piece of history that's been buried for too long, and it's important that we remember the pioneers who paved the way for this incredible technology. So, what other pieces of history have been overlooked or buried? What other inventions or discoveries are waiting to be rediscovered? It's a fascinating thought, and one that we should explore further.
According to the official history, the first nuclear weapons, or NW, were developed during World War II in the 1940s. So, according to them, the complete history goes like this. The idea of harnessing the power of the atom was first proposed in the early 20th century by scientists such as Ernest Rutherford and Albert Einstein. It wasn't until the 1930s, however, that the first significant breakthroughs were made in nuclear physics. In 1932, James Chadwick discovered the neutron, a particle that would play a crucial role in the development of NW. Then, in 1938, two German scientists, Otto Hahn and Fritz Strassmann, discovered nuclear fission, the process by which the nucleus of an atom is split into smaller parts, releasing a tremendous amount of energy. It wasn't long before scientists in the United States and other countries began working on developing NW. The Manhattan Project, a top-secret research program led by the United States, was established in 1942 with the goal of developing the world's first NW. The project employed some of the greatest minds of the time, including physicists such as Enrico Fermi and Robert Oppenheimer. On July 16, 1945, the first NW was successfully detonated in a test at Alamogordo, New Mexico. The bomb, known as Trinity, had an explosive yield equivalent to 20,000 tons of TNT and created a mushroom cloud that could be seen for miles. Just a few weeks later, on August 6, 1945, the United States dropped a nuclear bomb on the Japanese city of Hiroshima, killing tens of thousands of people and ushering in a new era of warfare. But, you know, there is a German book called Physikalischer Kinderfreund, written by Gerhard Wiedt, where in the book, there is a picture of a mushroom cloud, which is similar to an atomic bomb explosion. This book is a popular science book for children that was first published in Germany in 1798. It is a collection of experiments and demonstrations that explain various scientific principles and phenomena in an engaging and accessible way for young readers. What makes me wonder even more is, did a nuclear explosion ever happen before the book was written, considering that the book was a popular science book in 1789. I mean, we certainly remember history books about the events in Nagasaki and Hiroshima, right? How many times have these events been repeated? What do you think? Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.